Hi, my name is Shen Mei. I'm a PhD student in computer science at Worcester Polytechnic Institute, an engineering school near Boston, Massachusetts. My research area focuses on latency and gaming. I did this work with my advisor, Professor Mark Leipold. I'm funded by Intel Corporation and worked with Arthur Kuahara, James Scowell, and Jimmy Sherman on this work. Today, I will present our paper, Lead on Noob, How Player Skills Alter the Effects of Network Latency on First-Person Shooter Game Players. First, let's talk about the motivation. It's a common knowledge that decrease in latency help game players, and network latency is an important type of latency. It's the round trip time between the client and the server. For example, the uplink time is 40 milliseconds and the downlink time is 50 milliseconds. The network latency would be 40 plus 50 equals to 90 milliseconds. Now, if we upgrade the network to a faster network, there would be shorter network latency. The shorter latency will benefit gamers. And talking about affecting gamers, the first aspect would be performance. This would affect your ranking in the game. We have two metrics for performance, and they are weapon accuracy, which is the hit-miss ratio, and in-game score. The second aspect would be player's feeling. And the player feeling is represented by the quality of experience. Latency and players has been a well-studied area. However, players may have different skills in games. Many game players pay attention to network latencies, but how much network latencies impact players based on skill is not well known. Understanding the impact of network latency by player skill may better inform gamers about the need to upgrade their network connections and motivate developers and researchers to devise tools and systems to mitigate network latency for gamers and game-like applications. The question we are trying to answer here is, how does latency affect first-person shooter game players in different skill groups on performance and quality of experience? Now there might be a question in your mind. Okay, but why? Since latency and gaming is a well-studied space. For network latency and FPS games, Armitage estimate the network latency tolerance threshold for Quick 3 to be about 150 to 180 milliseconds. Aiming demonstrate player experience determines network latency sensitivity for Call of Duty, with competitive gamers more adept at compensating for impaired network conditions. Cox finds on Real Tournament 2003, players suffer with network latency and jitter as low as 100 milliseconds. We are beneficial in understanding the impact of network latency. These works do not identify nor isolate the player's skill in their assessment of network latency's impact. Here are more literature on player skills. Claypo classifies 51 users into three groups, have them play a target selection game with latency, and show that higher skill players are resilient to performance degradations for latencies above 350 milliseconds. These delays are much higher than many gamers may experience in actual gameplays. Amy query two users with different amounts of skill infer that higher skilled players notice even small amounts of latency, but are able to compensate for it better than lower skill players. However, the sample size here is far too small to generalize. They separate eight users into two teams, have them play four FPS games with network latency and jitter to study the factors that impact players, finding skill impact score, but not quality of experience. While beneficial in understanding the impact of network latency, this work focuses on high latency that may not be practical for gamers or gaming actions instead of full game, or suffer from a low sample size. Well, in our work, we will focus on low latency less than 150 milliseconds and first-person shooter games. We will study both performance and quality of experience with considerable sample size. Our intent was to get 30 skilled CSGO users, but the pandemic made this hard. So we had to recruit from non-CSGO players too, but skilled with FPS. 
We thought they would be same on the results, but it turns out they are not. Finally, 36 users were recruited in total. The users were recruited by self-reported total hours in CSGO. Players with greater than 100 hours in CSGO are higher skill players, and with less than 100 hours in CSGO are lower skill players. We have 25 higher skill players and, and 11 lower skill players in total. Higher skill player played about 900 hours of CSGO on average, where lower skill player only played about 20 hours on average. For gender, all the participants were male in both groups. We recruited from university email list, so all the participants were of typical college age. Here are more information about the users. These two graphs are the box and whisker plot of the self-reported hours in general FPS games. Both boxes depict quartiles and medians for the distributions, and the black pluses show the mean values. The left one is for higher skill players, and the right one is for the lower skill players. The mean value for higher skill player is about 1700 hours. For lower skill players, the mean is about 900 hours. Generally speaking, all the users are experienced in general FPS games, but the higher skill players are even more experienced. These graphs on the right are for their reaction time. The mean is about 200 milliseconds for both groups, which is typical reaction time of experienced gamers. To study the impact of network latency on first-person shooter game players, we designed a user study. The game for the study was Counter-Strike Global Offensive, one of the most popular first-person shooter games. We customized the game, so the game mode was deathmatch free for all. Well, the 20 balls are enemies, and the goal for the players is to kill as many as they can. Each round lasts 3.5 minutes. There are two pilot studies, and many parameters like game length, latency values were adjusted after the pilot studies. Our user study were conducted, uh, was conducted in a dedicated on-campus computer lab using a client-server architecture. The server hosts the game and is connected via high-speed LAN to the client. The client is, is equipped with a gaming mouse and high fresh rate monitor so as to minimize the base local system latency. The client runs the latest Linux system and the server runs Windows 10. Both server and the client run CSGO. Users were given wired Apple AirPods for audio. Social distance was conducted and all the devices were sanitized before each user. The game flow was self-contained. All the users need to do was to double click on the only button on the desktop and the flow will be loaded automatically. Normally speaking, network latency from zero to 100 indicates a good internet connection. Moderate internet connection may have latency between 100 and 200 milliseconds and the bad internet connections would cause even higher network latency. The base round trip time for the LAN in the study was less than one millisecond. It is captured by a high-speed camera with 1,000 frames per second. There are four shuffled total latency values for the rounds, and they are 25, 50, 100, and 150 milliseconds. After each round of game, player answers nine questions about their experience and feelings. After completing all the games, players fill out a demographic questionnaire. The graph on the left depicts weapon accuracy versus latency. The x-axis is network latency. The y-axis on the left is the weapon accuracy decrease from the 25 milliseconds network latency condition of the higher skill group. For example, an accuracy of 20% at 25 milliseconds of latency compared to an accuracy of 15% at 125 milliseconds of latency would be a 5% decrease. The y-axis on the right is accuracy percent. The points are the means for all users for that latency condition, bounded by 95% confidence intervals. The dashed lines show a linear regression for the mean values, and the blue points and the lines denote the higher skill users, and the red denote the lower skill users. The regression fits the means well for both groups of users with high R-square and a low p-value for both groups. 
visually, the higher skill slope is slightly steeper than the lower skill slope. Network latency has a 32% higher impact on accuracy for higher skill players. Where well, visually, the difference in accuracy slopes in the graph on the left for higher skill users and the lower skill users may not be dramatic. What often matters is where hits land. The graph on the right depicts the total number of headshots per minute versus latency. The axis and the points are as for the graph on the left, but here the y-axis are the headshots per minute instead of accuracy. The regression fits the means well for the higher skill group. However, the regression fits the lower skill groups less well, perhaps owing to the smaller sample size. Visually, the slopes for both groups are clearly separate, with the higher skill group getting about 50% more headshots per round than the lower skill group. Network latency has a 25% higher impact on the number of headshots for higher skill players. And higher skill players hit 50% more headshots per game than lower skill players. This graph depicts player score versus latency. The axis and the points are as in the previous graphs, but the data is a score, which is two times Q plus assistance per minute instead. The regression fits the means well for the higher skill group. However, the regression fits poorly for the lower skill group, again, probably due to the smaller sample size and high point and latency 100 milliseconds for the lower skill group. Visually, the slopes for the higher skill group is steeper than the slope for the lower skill group. Network latency has about five times impact on higher skill players than on lower skill players. For reference, often less than a single point separates the scores of top CSGO players in a game. For an overall measure of QE, we compute the mean combined rating, weighting all the questions equally. This figure depicts the results. The x-axis is network latency in milliseconds, and the y-axis is the rating. The points are the means for all the users for that latency condition, bounded by 95% condition intervals. The dashed lines are linear regression fits through the mean values. The blue represents the higher skill group, and the red represents the lower skill group. The linear regression fits the means well for both groups. Visually, the QE values are similar for the two groups at 25 milliseconds of latency. But the impact of latency is greater for the higher skill group than the lower skill group, as evidenced by the steeper slope. Visually, the QE values are similar for the two groups at the 25 milliseconds of latency but the impact of latency is greater for the higher skill group than the lower skill group as evidenced by the steeper slope. As a takeaway, an increase in network latency by 100 milliseconds decreased QE by about 0.3 points on a five point scale for lower skill players and 0.6 points for higher skill players. Network latency has twice the impact on QE for higher skill players. Here are some limitations. Our user study intentionally focused on the effects of latency on individual players' performance. Many first-person shooter games are often team games, where groups of players work together to defeat the opponent team. The impact of latency on CSGO team efforts, perhaps even team strategies, was not a the impact of latency on CSGO team efforts, perhaps even team strategies, was not assessed. Moreover, most CSGO games use only human players and not AI-controlled balls. Well, it is likely that the absolute scores observed would differ from users playing against human players. The relative effects should be similar since the latency affects the ability to aim and shoot. Our study has only 11 players in the lower skill group. Well, this is more than some other published studies of player skill and games. The small sample size limits the statistical power of the results. Our study is skewed towards males. Well, this may reflect the gender breakdown of the first-person shooter games today. The results may not be indicative of female performance in the competitive first-person shooter games. 
We studied the effects of network latency on the first person shooter game, CSGO, comparing the two groups of players, higher skill, those with extensive FPS experience and, con and considerable CSGO experience, and the lower skill, those with extensive FPS game experience, but a little or no CSGO experience. We set up a test bed that allowed for CSGO play with controlled amounts of, of latency, gathering objective data with log files and subjective data through surveys. 36 users each played rounds of CSGO with four different latency conditions, 25, 50, 100, and 150 milliseconds. Based on our analysis, network latency has more impact, both player performance and quality of experience on higher skill players than on the lower skill players. And moreover, for higher skill players, network latency has 50% more impact on accuracy, five times the impact on score, and twice the impact on QE than the lower skill players. Our work here focused on the impacts of low range of network latency on different skill players. Future work can extend to more games, more types of weapons, and more skill groups of players. Higher range of network latency with Jitter would be a rich space as well. Thanks for your attention on the work.